Hello, here's T from Tudesphere. Welcome to this tutorial called Firelight Lighting Set. Firelighter Set. I don't know how it's called. It doesn't matter. It will be about Firelighters, which is nameless. And I will do in these three kinds of Firelighters 10 materials and rendering. All of these I will render in Mental Ray. It's because Mental Ray is included in Max and it will be looking great. Well, I'm sure. So first of all, I will do a Zippo kind fire lighter. It's some kind of most used fire lighter in the world, I think. So for metal, so the materials will be easy for this, and it's nice smooth. So it will be also fun to model. So on this, uh, or better, in this tutorial, I want to explain the basics of photo modeling, and I think the file letters are a great option for me to do this. So let's start with the Zippo. Go to perspective and maximize them. Yeah. Oh, it's not working by me. Why? Oh, it's working now. Uh, so I will start uh, doing this from a primitive, shell, uh, primitive object. Which will be for me a box. So create a box. It doesn't matter this, about the size. I will change it. Call it Zippo base and apply some material like this default. This is looking better. Press F4 to see the edges. And now uh, at the beginning, I will moving the scene and rotating it by using hotkeys. And in this case, it is holding control and holding down the middle bounce box. So you're moving it. Then, by holding Alt and uh, middle mouse button, you're rotating. So this is just for the beginning. Now, turn off the grid because we didn't we don't need it, and I'm going to change this to 40. 15 and this to 55 and this shape should be our initial shape for our Zippo file light. Now I was telling that I'm going to explain the basics of poly modeling so right click and convert to editable poly. Now in this model I will use subdivision which means for us that all edges I will do just sharp and the chamfering will be also sharp and then the subdivision will do the rest for me. When you use now the subdivision you will get a nice round shape which is not looking like a firelighter but maybe yes but more like an egg. So turn this off. So I was mentioning chamfering so now I'm going to chamfer. But before, select these edges on the side. The file lighter is did from two parts. This part, or better, this bigger half, is the base part which is static. The upper part, the lower half, is dynamic and it's moving, or better, opening and closing. So, because this, I need to divide it in two parts. For this, I selected all edges all around and click connect. Now move this edge in the right position somewhere here. Maybe a little bit down. Yeah, some something like this. Now let's go to chamfering. Select these edges and these. Select and multiply edges by holding control on the left mouse button. And deselecting by holding Alt you see the minus now we don't see the plus but it should be there okay it doesn't matter so chamfer it by high value like 1.5 and the same do here so select the upper part and the bottom part you can see we have 16 edges here okay Chamfer it by low value and 
click OK. Now when you try the subdivision, you see, it's not uh, smoothing it all around, but because we chamfer the edges, it's smoothing it in the area which uh, is defined by the chamfering. And this, when you turn on the four the edges, this is our initial shape for our Z profile lighting. And it's nice smooth so far. Press F4 again. Now, select these edges all around and connect. Then hold down control and click on vertex. When you're holding down control and you are in edge mode and or poly mode, it will select all vertex or edges in the area which is selected by the poly or by the edge. So we have selected all these edges and now I'm going to scale it a little bit out. Just a little bit, really. Something like this. It should be enough. Now, uh, select the by poly, the upper part of the file lighter and detach it. Detach it by scrolling down, detach and zippo upper part. It's because this part is separately from this and I need to do some changes here or better upgrades a little later and I need to be separate. Now I unselected so we select uh, we see just this part but the second part is still here but we don't see it. It's fine. It's better than moving the object somewhere else. Then it will be a problem to move it back to the right position. So by this base part go down, click by poly this, holding down control and this poly. Here I want to do some area for text. At the bottom of the zipper file lighter is a text. There is written zippo, made in there and there and here and I don't know what other what else. Um, so for this I want to do some area. Insert is by one and bevel. Going to bevel it back just a little bit. And you can see that by inserting and beveling these uh, two vertex are going together. This go minus uh, point six. Yeah, S the value something like this. How you want? So, because these uh, two vertex are going together, I need to weld them together. Because a little later I will apply chamfer this and this edge. And when I will have to apply subdivision, it will do mess in this corner. So select these two vertex. Oh, better select Ctrl A all vertex. You see, we have 50. Now I need that it will be 46. Click weld. 46. Cool. The weld value is set to very less mm, by default. So don't be afraid that you will chamfer the edges which are not far from each other like this. <coughs> now, let's select this edge, the loop. As you can see, looped all around. Now select this edge, loop. It's not working. Back. Select this manually. It's because I was beveling it. Now, chamfer. By small value. like this. Now when we apply subdivision, press F4. You see we have nice area for the text. And later we use a bump map and apply an effect which will be looking like the text inside. It will be looking nice, trust me. Back to the top, the bottom is finished. Now it was dividing but cutting the model into half. So we have a cup here, better hole. So we need to cap this hole. Select by border, cap. By cutting it and capping, we lose these edges, which I need to recreate. 
just by selecting vertex and cutting them together. If you are not sure that you selected, uh, cut it dry, just weld them together after. Now, back to edge, select this one, loop, loop is not working, loop, ok. Now, sharpen by 007, click OK. You will see why, I'm why I chamfered this a little bit later. So don't forget, I will explain. Now, this base part is did from two parts, actually. My favorite word. So, I will not do this like two parts, because the second part you can take off in the real life. This is future life, so we don't need to do everything like it's in the real life. But between this part and the base part is a gap which I'm going to create now. And when we will finish, it will be looking like this part is separate from this part. It will be looking great. So we set this by 0 0.25, apply and OK. Now select this middle edge, loop, extrude it, extrude it back, uh, not much, minus 1, and this less, 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 less. Click OK, press F3 to see the wire. <coughs> so this is our bottom edge which was going down by extruding. Select these top two edges and click loop. I want to chamfer them. I want to chamfer this one and these two. So click chamfer by 0 0.35. And now when we apply a subdivision, you can see that we have a nice gap here which is simulating that the Z profile is did from two parts. Great. Turn this up. F4. Select by poly. Select these. Now bevel. Bevel is now up. And this a little bit less. Now select this edge, loop it, which will be not working here, of course. I don't understand why it's not working here. So select all edges, the stop. Not the in inside, just the corner edges. Chamfer. Chamfer by 0 0.1. Now, when we apply subdivision, a nice initial shape, or better, half of the shape done. Cool. You see, the base part is very nice, smooth. Mm. We have a gap here, so the thickness of the metal and so. Now, quick unhide all. Press F4 to see the edges. Click on this, hide unselected, and we are going to fix this one. With fix, I mean to cap this hole like before, so select by border, cap, select poly, select this one, no, oh, select edge, selected, chamfer by uh, 007, no, what I'm doing, uh, select the poly and set by 0 0.25, move the camera something like this, ok, Extrude it now back, press a free to see where it's going somewhere here. Now select these edges inside. Uh, no, select and chamfer by one. Okay, now select these two edges, loop, chamfer, by 007, click OK. 
so we fixed this hole here and did some chamfering there here now why was chamfering the outside edges on at all here if you remember it was this part it was because the sephora when the where was it? <laughs> Why is not chamfering? Strange issue. Ah, okay. When the ball parts go together, here's a small gap. When it, uh, the edges will not be chamfered, you will not see this gap. So, because this, I was chamfering them. Okay, the scarlet is going to be nice so far. So far, so good. Uh, press the photo to see the edges. Uh, turn by this uh, subdivision out and hide selection. Turn this off. Uh, select by poly and select only these top poly. These two. Without this chamfer, I have selected these with the chamfer. I click shrink and it's without the chamfer. Now detach this, but I call it tamp. Now I detach this because I will cut this plane into parts or two halves and later apply symmetry. It's because in this part is the place. Uh, where the fire is burning, somewhere here is the wheel which is doing the fire, is the knot. Here is some part which is uh, securing the knot and so on. And by this, uh, it's symmetric, so I don't need to do it twice, like on this side and this side. I'll just do it on one side and then apply symmetry. Okay. But this I will do in the next part. So, see you in the next part. Bye bye.